Okay. It's live. Okay, but I need to wait now 30 seconds, right? Um, no? I think we're good. We're live on Facebook now, yeah. Okay, well, if, if I'm good to start, then I'm gonna call the meeting to order at six o'clock. Um, I'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I was going to ask Council Member Leroy Munoz, but I don't, I don't see him online. So, uh, oh, there you are. Peter, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Council Member Leroy Munoz, will you lead us in the pledge? Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't hear that. Happy to okay. do so, would everyone please stand and place your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, which it stands one, nation, one nation, under God, under God in the indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Um, invocation, we have none. So city clerk's report on posting the agenda and roll call. Tonight's meeting agenda was posted on Friday, August 13th at 3.55 p.m. Roll call, Mayor Blinkley. Here. Councilmember Armendariz? Here. Councilmember Bracco? Here. Councilmember Laura Munoz? Present. Councilmember Marks? Here. Councilmember Tovar? Here. And again, I apologize, my video is not working. <laughs> and Councilmember Hilton, uh, absent. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, under orders of the day, not planning to move anything. Anybody, right? Okay, all council members are participating remotely pursuant to the governor's executive order number N2920 in order to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus. The meeting is being live streamed from the city website, cityofgilroy.org, and is viewable on cable channel 17 and on Facebook Live. Public comments can be made during the meeting by watching online on Zoom at https colon forward slash forward slash rb dot g y forward slash b x d nine s zero or by calling six six nine nine zero zero six eight three three using meeting id eight four six four five nine nine eight nine two one and passcode two five nine eight two nine when i call the item you wish to speak on press star nine on your telephone keypad or use the raise your hand icon. All right, employee introductions. Captain Smith, I think you've got somebody. I do, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. So the police department's happy to introduce two new employees and I see both are logged on. So hopefully they'll be able to say a few words um, after I introduce each of them. So first I'd like to introduce our newest public safety communicator, uh, Samantha Shuck. She was hired on August 9th of 2021. Samantha previously dispatched for the Fresno County Sheriff's Office for five years and did tactical dispatch for almost three years. She originally comes from a military family and moved a lot. Her mom, dad, sister uh, currently live in San Diego and she and her boyfriend of the last 10 years moved to Gilroy as part of a relocation to the Bay Area for a, a job promotion that he received. <clears throat> They're definitely uh, enjoying the cooler weather here in Gilroy uh, compared to the Fresno. Um, and in her spare time, she enjoys cooking and uh, making themed dinner parties. And she likes going on hikes and walks with her five-year-old Husky. So uh, Samantha, welcome. And uh, would you like to say a few words? Can you hear, hear me? Hi. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm definitely enjoying our move. It was a very stressful move, but we're happy to be here um, already enjoying um, all the great walking paths that Gilroy has and we're um, excited to be here and I'm very excited to work for City of Gilroy. Yay, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Oh, um, we're pleased to have you. And so next up, um, I'm happy to introduce our newest police officer, Angel Velasquez. He was, uh, hired on the 13th of August. And um, Angel is uh, a native of Gilroy. He attended Gilroy High School, earned an Associates of Arts in General Business from Gavilan College, and his Bachelor of Arts in Sociology from the University of California in Santa Barbara. 
Uh, Angel became a police explorer for Gilroy PD uh, from uh, 2015 to 2018. And in 2019, he joined the Salinas Police Department where he's employed for about two years as a community service officer, uh, police recruit and officer prior to transferring uh, to Gilroy PD. And Angel's spare time, he likes to spend time with his family, his girlfriend, uh, friends. He uh, likes to stay active, work out and listen to uh, country music. And uh, we're, we're uh, very, very happy to have Angel back uh, with us. And uh, Angel, I see you're here. Would you uh, like to say a few words? Hi, Captain. Thank you for that. Hi, Mayor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet everybody. Um, I'm just super thankful for this opportunity. It's a dream to be able to serve my community, and I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Great. Okay. Awesome. Thank you both for being here. All right. Get back to work. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, can I interrupt yeah. you for just a second? I, I have some information I think we need to share. Uh, we're currently having some audio issues on the city's website. So if you uh, want to watch uh, the, the, uh, the meeting, please go over to Facebook and it is working there. Uh, we believe we've been doing some technological upgrades today and we may have an issue with the sound coming out of there, but you can watch it on Facebook. And if you know somebody who's watching, please text them or, or let them know that go over to Facebook and it's working fine there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, we have a presentation, five minutes from our Bicycle and Pedestrian Commission, the annual presentation of the council. It's gonna be given to us by Chairperson Patrick Plout. All right, Patrick, you are on. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council for the time to present this evening. I'm Patrick Flott. I'm the current chair for the Bicycle Pedestrian Commission. Bryce is gonna be running these slides for me. Bryce, could you please just click, click, click until the slide shows? Perfect. Has a commission, oh, oh, okay, perfect. As a commission that thrives on public outreach and events-based participation, COVID was a large blocker for the better part of 2020 and first quarter of 2021. Of all of our accomplishments this year, I am most proud of our face mask purchases for the community and our continued outreach via our social media campaigns and our Ride the Gardens event on May 21st with over 300 people showing up to ride. I'm extremely proud of my three new commissioners and their contributions to the BPAC so far. The community has really noticed their efforts. Next slide, Bryce. The Bike Pledge Initiative is a two-pronged approach toward achieving the BPAC's goals. It allows us to both engage with and support the public with incentives for their commitment to riding safely in our community. And it generates important metrics for our access to Measure B, education and encouragement funds. One of our new commissioners, Nerza Starks, has taken full ownership of this initiative and has engaged with local businesses to give away merchandise and food items to winners this year. Next slide, Bryce. The BPAC was granted access to Measure B education and encouragement funds two months prior to the mask mandate in June. We were able to solicit vendor bids, create a design, and have the mask delivered in less than three weeks, one week before the Bike to Wherever Day function and Ride the Gardens event. Talk about timing. The two photos on the bottom right are from a recent Meet the Police and Ice Cream event held earlier this month on August 3rd at the Senior Center. And that's Nerza Starks on the bottom right. Commissioner Nerza Starks and I passed out 100 face masks in 30 minutes of this event. Most attendees had one-time use masks and were very happy to receive our high quality reusable face masks. Next slide, Bryce. We have many programs and events that the BPAC is looking forward to participating in this year and next. It must be noted that with the rise of the Delta variant in California, our participation in Safe Routes to School and certain other outdoor events may need to be continually reevaluated going into the end of the year. Next slide, Bryce. As chair, I've created long range goals and there's two of them. First one is preparing Gilroy for an electric future. Second one is the bicycle parking and safety expansion. I believe it is prudent to have long range goals that go beyond our yearly goals and strategic work plan. The idea here is that a future chair and the BPAC and its commissioners can continually steward the city down these paths with feedback, engagement with vendors, and direct recommendations to City Hall. The first stages of the long range goal number one are sourcing RFIs from scooter vendors happening this year, collecting data from Project Chrysalis for e-bike usage metrics in town, 
and suggesting expansion of electric vehicle charging stations for new commercial developments. The first stage of long range goal number two started this year with the introduction of Project 529, a national database for bike theft and tracking and recovery with an informal audit provided by the chief of police regarding their current anti-bike theft program. Next slide, Bryce. I wanna say thank you to Sheila Castillo, our recording secretary, you're amazing. Uh, thank you and farewell to Neuron Thon. He was just an amazing, well-driven engineer that provided us lovely updates and impact in this community. Thank you to Gary Heap for his service as our prior staff liaison. Thank you to Eugene Bernoski, our bicyclist of the year for 2021. And welcome to Bryce Atkins, our new BPAC staff liaison. Thank you for facilitating this presentation, Bryce. Next line. I'm open to any questions. Awesome, thank you, Patrick. Great presentation. Council, any questions? No, awesome presentation. I had to get a picture of the picture of Rhonda there because your, your, the picture that you had is a very good friend of mine. I promised her I'd send it to her, so I did. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you very much for that. You're very welcome. Okay, presentation. So uh, presentations to the council. This is now uh, public comment. Time for anybody from the public who'd like to speak on um, something that's not on the agenda, but over which the Gilroy City Council has jurisdiction. Uh, do we have any public speakers? If you wish to speak on this on uh, item not on the agenda, please raise your hand at this time. See none. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on to reports of council members. Uh, council Member Bracco. Yes. I'm sorry about my camera not working too. Um, we just had a meeting before this one uh, for the Gilroy Youth Task Force, which was formerly the Gilroy Gang Task Force. And uh, we had went dormant and shifted uh, $40,000 over to the uh, police foundation to distribute. And we, we didn't care for the, they weren't really distributing it. So we decided to make a comeback and the Gilroy Youth Task Force will be back in business now. We will get our $20,000 back and we will start doing uh, our own grants again and uh, fundraising. So if anybody in the public would like to donate to the Gilroy Youth Task Force, contact me, Peter or Marie. Thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Armendariz. Thank you, Mayor. Tomorrow is the Historic Heritage Committee meeting. So uh, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, but Wednesday. So I'll report back on that meeting at our following council meeting. But I did attend as an alternate uh, for council member Hilton, the uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy uh, Board meeting. Uh, council member Hilton could not attend and asked me to attend. Um, it was a very long meeting with two closed sessions afterwards, but um, we discussed some important things, including a, um, Let's see, a resolution um, which will save over $1.3 million annually, um, which means that we will be prepaying for um, 30 years worth of energy transactions. And that saves 1.3 to $1.7 million per year. And that money goes right back in, uh, invested back into Silicon Valley Clean Energy and into programs that also help people make their uh, payments, people who, who, uh, who need help paying for those, um, for their energy bill. Um, we have a review of the, we had a review of the upcoming budget for um, fiscal year 21 to 22. And we also passed a resolution to support the electric vehicle adoption initiative, um, which is being led by a nonprofit called ZEV 2030, which um, their goal is to um, have 100% of zero emission vehicle sales by 2030. So um, it was a busy night and um, that's what we did. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Council Member Marks. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just wanna remind the public about some dates that are coming up that they might enjoy. This coming Thursday night, August 19th is another Thursday night live 
downtown on August 28th is another Gourmet Alley preview with music and food. And on September 25th is Porch Fest. Done, back to report, okay. Okay, uh, Council Member Tovar. No report, Mayor. Okay, Council Member LaRoman Yost. Thank you, Mary. Um, Mary, <laughs> Mayor, sorry, my sister's name is Mary. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Anyway. A uh, quick shout out to my sister, but uh, no, uh, happy to report that the um, uh, I attended last week with uh, the mayor and councilwoman uh, Marks, the unveiling of the new facilities at the Brownell Middle School, um, really a, a, a great set of facilities they have over there. Uh, it was so funny, they, they talked about the big concrete track that used to be kind of out there right right off of first street and and just it, what they've done is amazing so if you haven't yet had a chance to even just drive by and look looks totally different big upgrade for our students in the city uh very excited to see that last week uh two meetings uh that i did attend during uh the last couple of weeks the valley water district did have uh its meeting a few weeks ago uh, that was something that we received an update on the water shortage emergency and the conservation efforts, which obviously the council uh, also did uh, last week uh, or two weeks ago. Uh, additionally, there's more information on the city's website if you'd like to see that. And then finally, the Gilroy Economic Development Council met last week. I was joined by that with uh, council member Fred Tovar, and we discussed a variety of items, including reports from the chamber, visit Gilroy and uh, we spoke about updating the GEDC website. So a lot going on in that respect. Thank you. Thank you. There is a lot going on. I seem to have everything, something with everything that I'm on too. So the Gilroy Economic Development Partnership, different than the Economic Development Corporation that Council Member LaRoman Yost just talked about. Um, we have our next meeting on August 25th, and the important thing I want to say to everybody is that's they're going to discuss uh, starting to publicize what we can about the sharks coming to Gilroy. So, because that's one of the three initiatives that the GEDP was set out, you know, to to look at. It was Gilroy Gardens, it was the sports park, and the downtown um, gourmet alley. So they're going to start. Hopefully the public is gonna start hearing a lot more about what this could look like or what things are being considered, the portions of it that can be shared anyway. And then the city of Gilroy will also begin public outreach and town halls to get feedback from our residents. So everybody be looking for these things like in the next, within the next month, you're gonna be hearing a lot more about this. So we all know what's going on to the extent possible. Gilroy sister cities, I don't report much on this. There hasn't been much to report on because of COVID. So I just want the people to know that what they have been doing is, is monthly virtual meetings with Takamachi, not really any of the other sister cities, but with uh, Takamachi. Scraw. What I want to say about Scraw is, you know, for years, and I sit on this board with council member Tovar and council member Bracco, uh, Morgan Hill has two council members and Scraw historically, we've, we just thought of as sewer treatment and it is sewer treatment, but it, we've gotten a lot more into water recycling and water purification too. Those are two big things. So we met with Valley Water uh, a week and a half ago, and we've got all of us here on the council have a meeting on Monday with the full Morgan Hill City Council and Va Valley Water as well to address that JPA, that joint, the, the agreement that we have for the water recycling and purification portion of what we do at Scraw or what happens or how Scraw partners with Valley Water for water recycling. Okay, and lastly, VTA. The VTA uh, board last week voted in favor of, well, not last week, at their August meeting, uh, voted in favor of the Gilroy City Council's request to delay progress of the 150 unit housing project they've proposed downtown over half of the transit center. The delay is for two months, meaning we have until October before the board will consider authorizing an RFO, which is a request for offer for this development. At the meeting, two Gilroy City Council members spoke in opposition to the vote of the Gilroy City Council. So I would like to remind this council 
that a vote that doesn't go the way you know you might want doesn't mean you can ignore it. We're a seven member body that governs by majority, not by individuals. So once the council has voted, that is the position of the city and that's how we move forward. So if you wish to express a personal opposing opinion, do not refer to yourself as a council member when doing so, because as a council member, you're part of the seven member body and this seven member bo body cast, cast a vote. Um, lastly, I'd like to uh, point out that the city puts out weekly emails full of information of what's happening around the city and a summary of the upcoming council agenda and links to actual sources. So if you're not receiving those emails, please subscribe to the email express by emailing the city clerk at cityclerk at cityofgilroy.org or by signing up online at cityofgilroy.org. You don't need to wait for council members to tell you what's coming up on the agenda. And that isn't even the official way to do it anyway, because it's not the same when you're not getting it from the city clerk's office. Okay, that is my report. So we move on to future council initiated items. Is there anything uh, someone wants to raise here? Mayor, I'd like to talk about something and um, possibly getting it on the agenda. Um, you might have heard about the recent uptick in fentanyl related deaths. And in Gilroy, we've had, um, you know, more than enough. We've had uh, too many already of young people and, um, and others uh, who lost their life due to this, um, this drug, which is really, it's poisonous. And it also affects the first responders who, who arrive at the scene. We've had uh, police officers uh, who've died as a result of exposure what to- What is it you're asking? Okay, so I'm asking um, that we ask our uh, police department to um, focus somehow. I know in the past we've had task force and um, other, you know, we focused on marijuana in the past. We focus on, um, I don't think we focused on meth, but in the past we focused on marijuana um, as a city and I, or as, a, as our, our police department. And so I'd like to see if our, um, our police department can dedicate more resources to stymieing the influx of, of or focusing on the influx of, of this drug into our community. Okay, council, how would you like to handle that? I know I get requests from all, for all different things for the police department to focus more energy on. You know, it's, I, I don't know how to go to, that is an excellent cause. So is all of the other crimes that, that are happening out there. Um, so does someone else on the council have something to uh, say to that? Otherwise- Mayor? Yes. Yeah, this is Dion. Um, yeah. I, I think all it takes is just uh, uh, give uh, the police department direction to come back with a report to us. I, I don't think it really needs to go on a future agenda item because we don't have any information. Okay. Um, Jimmy, do you want to, Fred, I see your hand up. I'll come to you in just a second. Jimmy, do you have yeah, a comment to that? Yeah, I actually, Mayor, I do have a couple of th things. One, the, the police department takes direction from the city administrator, uh, does not take direction from council. And two, if you would like a report, then I would, uh, you know, I would ask the council, uh, then direct the city administrator to come back with a report about efforts that the police department could do to uh, to help with the fentanyl problem, uh, uh, some type of informational item that we could return uh, is what I would recommend. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Tovar. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, no, I was just going to support what uh, Councilmember Armadares was mentioning, and yeah, I, I'm okay with our city manager coming back to the report. And after that, if we need further information or further research, then I'm open to recognizing it. But I think right now, this just get a report back on this very important topic. Okay, Council Member Armendariz. Yeah, thank you. And I know, Mayor, that lots of things are important, but we've lost two young people under 25 years old to this in the past year, plus countless others, you know, and it's just getting worse. So I, thank you for- I, un I understand. I'm not den denying what's happening out there. I'm just trying to apply resources to so many different things that are all very, very necessary causes. Uh -huh. So, okay, does the council wish to direct, I guess I need a thumbs up for who would like to direct the city administrator to come back with a report. Okay, Fred, your camera is off and Dion, yours off, so you guys are going to have to say out loud. I have my hand up, yes. Okay. okay. 
Yes. Okay. So Jimmy, that you've got enough direction there to come back with something to see if there is anything that the chief thinks uh, he can do, or at least inform us of what's going on and what they maybe are doing about it. Or great. Thank you. Can. Yes, Madam Mayor, and I'll, I'll also tell you that we'll have information not just from the police law enforcement side, but also from our partners with the county. So we'll we'll get we'll get you the information you need to the, uh, to have a good discussion. Yeah, and the issue is is drugs that are laced with it, correct? That's what the issue is. Yeah, yeah. or sold in lieu of them. Yeah. Yeah, but it's they're illegal drugs to start with, right? Illegal that are laced, sold illegally. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right, and obtained illegally. <laughs> sold illegally and obtained illegally. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, consent calendar. Um. um. Carol, yes. Mayor, I would like to pull item B because I think we need further clarification okay. on what that's going to be. Okay, so council member Marks would like to pull item B. Do I have a motion to approve oh. A and C? Mayor, Mayor. Oh, yes. Ap apologies, but I was unable to attend the last meeting, so I will be abstaining with regard to the minutes. Very good. Okay, so do I have a motion for A and C? So moved. Okay, Second. moved. Moved by council member Bracco, seconded by council member Yos, who is abstaining from item C. Okay, um, roll call vote. Council member Edmundetis? Yes. Council member Bracco? Yes. Council member Hilton? Or absent, sorry. <laughs> council member Loromunoz? Yes. Council member Marks? Yes. Council member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. Okay, so Council Member Marks, why don't you go ahead with item B and then we can take that one up. Okay, I would just, I like, the, ugh, let me start over. I would like some clarification on how the cars are going to exit and enter into the apartment complex on Santa Teresa. I looked in the report at the diagrams and there's no mention of whether it's going to be a roundabout or a right turn only, or are they going to put a stoplight in and take down the divider? So if we could just tell the public how that's going to look. Jimmy or anyone that would know that? Yeah, through the mayor, I'm gonna ask our public works director, Daryl Jordan, to and uh, our city engineer, uh, Gary Heap, they, they have that information for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, city manager. I'm gonna hand this over to Gary. He can give you the details that you're asking for tonight, ma'am. All right, thank All right. you. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, Gary Heap with the Public Works Department. And if I could share my screen, I'll go ahead and show you the site plan. It's actually the striping plan that's going through the review process right now. Can you guys see that? Uh, the screen there? Site plan? Thank you. So the pro this is uh, the project site itself. This is our bike park at the corner of First and um, uh, Santa Teresa or Hecker Pass in Santa Teresa. This is the Santa Teresa frontage and this is the Hecker Pass frontage. So vehicles will be entering the site via Santa Teresa along this pathway here and they'll be exiting the site uh, in a right turn only uh, at this location here. There'll also be a right turn in at the location here along Hecker Pass. So uh, ingress uh, from either Hecker Pass or Santa Teresa egress or exiting from uh, Hecker Pass only. Uh, the second access is needed for emergency vehicle access. Uh, so uh, that's why the project has two separate driveways. All right. All right. So it, I guess I have another question then. Is that safe just to have one exit street? We've reviewed it. We've had our traffic evaluation done. Uh, Hexagon did the traffic study for this, looked at the circulation. Uh, yeah, we feel this is uh, suitable for the project. Okay. All right. Does any, sorry, does anyone else have any questions? Okay. Does anyone, uh, would anyone like to make a motion then on this item? I'll make a motion. To approve? Yes, to approve. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. second that. Okay, I'll let that go to Council Member Armendaris. I heard that first. So, motion made by Council Member Marks, seconded by Council Member Armendaris to approve item B that was removed from consent. Uh, roll call vote. Council Member Armendaris? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Loro Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. 
Council Member Tovar. Not seeing him. Um, and Member Lingley. Yes, and I just realized I never asked for public comment on the consent calendar. I'm guessing there wasn't any since no one is complaining, but is there anybody who wants to speak on the consent calendar items? Currently seeing no um, hands raised. Okay, okay. All right, item 7A, bids and proposals. Approval of single source contract in the amount of $196,007 with Stryker Emergency Care for the purchase of seven LifePak 15 monitor defibrillators, including a discounted four-year maintenance agreement. And I believe Chief Wyatt will be giving this report. Yes? Yes, thank you, Honorable Mayor um, and Council. I, I, uh, let me go through the... Uh, the purpose of the purchase and kind of give you an uh, overview of some of the problems that we're having right now with our current models. Um, we use the LifePak 15 on every one of our uh, ALS paramedic uh, units, uh, all our frontline and most of our, uh, our reserve apparatus uh, possess one. It's a necessary and essential item. Uh, all paramedics are are to um, use those as part of their assessment tools, particularly for cardiac related uh, issues. And so it's the, um, the standard of care for, uh, for Santa Clara County and, and most of the state whenever uh, we encounter someone with uh, heart trouble or what's perceived to be heart trouble. Uh, we have nine units that uh, of those seven were purchased almost eight years ago and they're reaching the end of their usable life. Uh, the defibrillators uh, right now, uh, we've been told by the manufacturer that um, uh, in 2022, just next year, they will not be able to service the internal components of the device. Um, as time goes on, the technology does change and gets better uh, over time. And so the units are, are basically aging out. What we're asking uh, council to approve tonight is the purchase of those seven units at a significant discount by the vendor. The vendor is offering uh, basically 43% off their, uh, their base price. And uh, so uh, that is a four year um, uh, maintenance agreement that, we, uh, that they are also offering, uh, offering to us at a discount. So basically, uh, the units, uh, when we include all seven, will cost a total of $196,007. Uh, this is actually a savings, a total savings of about $150,000 if we were to buy them at their, on, uh, at their full price. So uh, we felt that th this was the best time to, uh, to take them up on the offer and to uh, trade out the units while they're um, still usable and certainly before they, uh, they expire in their usable life. Uh, these units are good for at least eight years. So we, we stop the clock and we restart it for the next, uh, next generation of uh, firefighters that will be handling the uh, cardiac related calls. Just to give you an idea of how important uh, these devices are to us, um, obviously, I mentioned that they're part of an assessment tool, but also uh, they provide a life-saving defibrillation when the heart suddenly stops and we're able to get there in time and, and uh, convert that heart to a normal perfusing rhythm. We were able to do that 10 times last year in 2020. Uh, that's uh, in my career, I've never seen so many saves. Um, I can attribute part of that to the device itself, but also to the fact that our crews um, are highly trained uh, and uh, they know the importance of high quality CPR before the, uh, uh, the use of the defibrillator. And in addition to that, our timing of getting to the scene uh, rather quickly has increased as a result of the, uh, the Santa Teresa unit. So, I'll just say that all these things coupled together have made a significant um, change in our save rate for cardiac related patients. And so I tonight asking for the, uh, 
the full replacement of seven of the nine units. The other two units, by the way, we purchased over the last couple of years. So they have plenty of uh, service, serviceable life left in them. And uh, uh, I'm available for any questions you might have. All right, thank you, Chief. All right, Council, uh, please raise your hand if you have any questions of the Chief. All right, seeing none, uh, I'll go to public comment. Do we have anybody from the public who would like to speak? If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press star nine to unmute yourself. Seeing, seeing none. Okay, uh, I see a hand raised now back to council. Council member Armendariz. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, Chief and your team. Uh, the 10 lives saved is amazing. So thank you for that. I'm wondering, um, are the defibrillators, are they, carried uh, on our equipment or do we also have some stationary ones at um, at a city hall or any of our public buildings yeah actually that's a very good question um, council council member uh, these devices that we're talking about the life pack 15s are very sophisticated devices they uh, monitor not only your uh, cardiac uh, rhythm but they also monitor your blood gases in other words what your oxygen intake is, what your CO2 intake is, what you're actually expelling, I should say. And uh, in fires, they're uh, actually very useful on patients and firefighters that uh, are exposed to uh, toxic uh, carbon monoxide. They'll like, even monitor that. Um, the, uh, the other units, the civilian-based units that anyone can use, are located throughout the city. Uh, in fact, um, the city itself has uh, 11 that they have at different uh, sites and they're at fixed sites and they're routinely um, checked on a quarterly basis. And uh, they're much more simpler to operate. Uh, virtually anybody can operate them. And they really only have uh, a single function. They, their, their purpose is to restart the heart if it's a shockable rhythm. They don't do the additional monitoring or sophisticated 12 lead um, EKGs that, that, the, that we as paramedics would do. I hope that answers your question. But uh, yes, every one of our, our first in, uh, app, whoop, I just lost myself there. Whoop. Every one of our first in apparatus uh, has uh, the life pack 15 and, so, and most of our reserve apparatus have that. That way, uh, if we uh, are called to, um, uh, to provide mutual aid to another district, we would be taking with us uh, this sophisticated device to um, assist not only uh, with civilian, but um, possible firefighter casualties. Okay, thank you, Chief. Okay, any other questions? And if not, then certainly a motion, uh, if anybody would like to make a motion. A motion. So okay, Council that. Member, okay, Council Member Marks and seconded by, was it Council Member Tovar? Yes. Who's the second? Okay. So we have a motion by Council Member Mark, seconded by Council Member Tovar to award a single source contract to strike for emergency care in the amount of $196,007 for the purchase of seven Life Pack 15 monitors, defibrillators, including a discounted four year maintenance agreement, and authorize the city administrator to execute the contract and associated documents. Okay, roll call. Council Member Edmundetis? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Lara Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. <clears throat> that passes unanimously with one absent. Okay, public hearings. Item 8A conduct a Tax Equity and Fiscal Responsibility Act public hearing and approval of the issuance of multifamily housing revenue bonds by the California Municipal Finance Authority for an affordable housing project located at 1520 Hecker Pass Highway. And Craig uh, Tambernini is going to be giving the staff report. I want to remind everyone that this is just the approval of the financing. This is not the project itself. This is just a financing that has to have a public hearing attached to it in order for the bonds to be tax exempt. Okay, Craig, take it away. 
Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. As the Mayor's pointed out, this is just for approval of the financing bonds. <coughs> Uh, the bonds are in the amount of $40 million. They would finance, they would be used to finance the affordable housing project proposed at Hecker Pass and Santa Teresa. Uh, this item has actually previously been approved by the council for a lesser bond amount of $34 million, but the uh, developer needed to seek a higher bond amount. So this is back before uh, the city council to conduct another hearing for that purpose. That's all I have to present. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. So I will go to council. Do you have any questions of Craig uh, before I move down to other uh, ex parte communications and then I go to public hearings? Okay, so is, are, does anyone have ex parte communications to disclose? Any conversations you've had with anybody related to this item? No, okay. No. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing. Um, is there anyone from the public who'd like to speak on this item? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing none. Okay, then I will close the public hearing and um, come back to council and ask for a motion if there are no questions. Oh, Councilor Lorman Move approval. Lorman Move approval. Oh, Second. okay. All right. I've got a motion by Council Member LaRomano, seconded by Council Member Bracco to adopt a resolution of the City Council of the City of Gilroy approving the issuance of multifamily housing revenue bonds in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $40 million for the purpose of financing or refinancing the acquisition and construction of Hecker Pass Apartments Project. Roll call vote. Council Member Armendariz? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Le Romanos? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Topar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. That's also unanimous, uh, minus one absent. All right, item B adoption of mitigated negative declaration, approval of planned unit development, the tentative map, the ARC and site review permit of, uh, for the cottages at Kern, planned unit development residential subdivision project. Wow. All right. And Miguel is going to be giving this staff report, correct? Uh, correct, Madam Mayor. Uh, right. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Uh, council members, this is Miguel with the Gilroy Planning Division. Today, I'm here to present uh, Cottages at Kern, which is uh, requesting adoption of a negative declaration, approval of a zoning amendment, approval of a vested tentative map, and approval of an architectural and site review application uh, to develop a small lot subdivision. <laughs> All right. Um, quick, quick are, can you guys see my screen? No, yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. Location. So the site is located south of uh, Tatum Avenue, north of Mantelli, and is uh, currently zoned R3, which allows single family residences. The project came under the 2020 general plan, which get, uh, gave it a medium density residential. Um, single family residences were allowed um, under the old 2020 general plan uh, medium density provided that they met the density requirements of eight to 16 uh, dwelling units per acre. Uh, real quick, this is the site plan. So the site is uh, currently served by all utilities. Uh, the project would uh, take access off of Kern Avenue and um, the internal circulation um, would meet all fire uh, safety requirements and um, provides enough space for emergency vehicles and trash collection. The project density would be 8.83 units per acre, which is consistent with the 2020 general plan that it came under. And the lot sizes would range between 3,000 square feet and 7,389 square feet. Uh, this is smaller than the um, what the medium density uh, zoning allows, but this is um, this request for uh, smaller lots is part of the PUD uh, application. Um, other PUD requests aside from the reduced lot sizes include a uh, reduced front and side yard setbacks, which is uh, five feet instead of the 12 feet for the side yard and 13 feet instead of the 26 uh, for the front yard. Um, I wanna point out that um, the lots that are fronting Kern Avenue, they do meet the side yard street setbacks and the front yard setbacks. So um, the frontage would keep in character with uh, the established neighborhood across the street. 
in exchange for these um, deviations from the um, medium density zoning designation, the applicant is offering as amenities uh, one or uh, 0.12 acres of communal space, which would include a uh, play yard, uh, paved walkway, and will be landscaped. Um, the applicant off also offers um, entry features to the development which will consist of a masonry wall, decorative pavers, and a uh, area set aside for public art. And um, also the project would have um, extensive landscaping throughout the development, uh, which will be maintained by the, by the HOA. The architecture for the site or for the architecture on site review um, would be three floor plans and uh, three architectural styles, um, which is farmhouse, traditional, and Spanish. Each style has been differentiated, um, so uh, they, they've been differentiated from one another uh, uh, using materials design and color palette. Uh, each style will be will be easily um, differ, uh, distinguished from from the other styles. Uh, the project would be uh, completed in four phases. And lastly, the project does not propose any affordable or income adjusted um, housing analysis. Uh, the project does meet the 2020 general plan medium density um, policies and the project, um, the PUD application can be supported with the proposed design and the amenities. Uh, the tentative map would meet all of uh, the California Map Act requirements, um, provided that the PUD does get approved, and the architectural and site review standards have been met. On August 8th, the Planning Commission um, recommended that the council adopt a negative declaration and approve the requested uh, entitlements with the addition of two conditions. Um, one of the conditions would be that the developer would provide um, a preloaded clipper card to um, new owners and uh, the HOA would reload these clipper cards um, with $100 annually. And the second condition is that uh, the, it, the second condition is that um, crepe myrtles would be prohibited um, um, street trees on Kern Avenue. So any other tree that's on the city's approved street tree list um, can be planted provided that it's not a crepe myrtle. So uh, in conclusion, um, staff's recommendation is to adopt a resolution adopting the negative declaration uh, that was prepared for the project based on the findings required by CEQA. Adoption of an ordinance approving the planned unit development uh, application Z20-06 as requested uh, subject to certain findings. Adoption of the resolution approving tentative map TM20-06 um, subject to certain findings and conditions and adoption of a resolution approving architectural and site review permit AS 20-20 um, request, as requested subject to certain findings and conditions. Uh, that would conclude uh, staff's presentation if there's any questions. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, do you know why the discrimination against crepe myrtles? Yeah, I was gonna ask. <laughs> So um, this came from a uh, chair of the planning commission and um, he feels that uh, crepe myrtles are not a significant tree. They're more akin to a bush in his opinion. Uh, they don't provide a lot, a lot of Interesting. shade. Interesting, wow. I would totally disagree, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, let me ask you this before I go to the rest of the council. Do you know if the, and I can ask this of the applicant, but from the planning commission meeting where I'm sure the applicant was present, was there any objection by the applicant to not using crate myrtles or to providing $100 preloaded uh, clipper cards? Um, no, there was no objection to the crate myrtles or to the clipper cards. Okay, thank you. Uh, All may, right, may, uh, may, I, may I add one thing to the staff report? Sure. Yeah, this is Andy. Uh, the, the, the agenda is, is slightly confused. There are four items, A, B, C, and D. Item A is to adopt and approve the uh, review and, and adopt the mitigated negative declaration. Item B is to introduce the ordinance. It's not to adopt the ordinance because as we know, uh, plan development zoning is done by ordinance. So today we would simply be introducing the ordinance. And then item C and D would be adoption of resolutions. However, the agenda says introduce resolutions but there isn't any concept really that for resolutions. So items on the agenda, items C and D would be adopt resolutions. Okay, and that's okay to change right now? Yes, it is. 
Okay. All right, council members, um, I'll start I'll start with ourselves. Uh, and uh, Miguel, would you mind clearing the screen of the so that I can see everybody? Thank you. All right, council members, please raise your hand if you have any questions before I go to public comment. Okay, your council member Lerman Yos. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Miguel, can you just quickly go back to the slide that shows the layout? Uh, I believe it was slide number four. Uh, sure thing. It was just one back there. And I'm, I'm trying to remember there. There's a sidewalk across the street at this point on Kern. Is that correct? Across the street, yes. There is. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because I didn't see a sidewalk here. Maybe I missed it. Um, but I just wanted to ensure there was a sidewalk at some point along that stretch of Kern because I know there are residential areas right over there. Okay. No, I, I just wanted to verify that there was a sidewalk on the other side. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else with a question? All right, then I'm going to go, I'm going to ask again for ex parte communications. Has anyone had any communications with uh, uh, the developer, the applicant, or any anybody else on this item? No. None. Okay. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing. Do we have anybody from the public who would like to speak on this item? Yes, we have one person. Carolyn, you may speak. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I had some concerns when I uh, reviewed the uh, the CEQA um, document and uh, how they kind of blew off vehicle miles traveled um, remediation uh, with the, um, the basically we couldn't do anything. And I'm really pleased to hear that the uh, $100 um, Clipper card has been added in. So I just want to say good going planning commission and I, I hope it gets approved with that. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none. All right, I, I know the applicant is here. Um, I, I don't know that you, I, if you want to speak, you can, but otherwise I, I assume you're here to answer questions if anything comes up. Uh, Madam Mayor and members of the Gilroy City Council, we are here. Uh, this is Chris Sabalas from DR Horton. Uh, Kavitha Kumar joins me as well. We don't have a formal presentation, but are certainly here. Our civil engineers are also available if there are any technical questions. Um, so good evening and thank you. Okay. No, I, I, I think we're good. So um, not seeing any council. In the, is there a motion to review and adopt the mitigated, mitigated negative declaration prepared for the project based on findings required by CEQA? Mayor, I'll, I'll move for approval. I'll second. Okay, so move for approval by Council Member Tovar, seconded by Council Member LaRoman Yos. Yes. All right, yes. and I, I, we, we have to do these separately, correct? Yes. Okay, so roll call vote. <laughs> Councilmember Edmondetis? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Lara Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. Okay, and that's unanimous minus one absent. So that brings us to item B. If anyone would like to make a motion to introduce an ordinance to approve planned unit development Z 2006 I'll as requested. Subject to certain findings. Motion made by Council Member Bracco. Second. Seconded by Council Member Leromeos. Roll call vote. Council Member Edmondaris? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Leromeos? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All see unanimous with one absent. Okay, uh, this would be now looking for a motion to adopt a resolution to approve tentative map TM 20 06 as requested, such as certain findings. Is there a motion on that? I'll move. So moved by Council Member Tovar. Council Member Tovar and Council Member Leromanios? I'll second that. How, okay. 
Sorry, roll call vote. Councilmember Hernandez? Yes. Councilmember Broco? Yes. Councilmember Lero Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. Mayor Blankley? Yes, that's also unanimous, minus one absent. All right, lastly, it's to adopt a resolution to a and site review permit AS 20 as requested, subject to certain findings and conditions. Okay, so that would include all the conditions that were listed in the staff report, which includes the clipper cards and no crepe myrtles. <laughs> <laughs> I love crepe myrtles. Okay. <laughs> I'll make that motion. And I'll second that. Okay, I got the second by Le Councilmember Leroy Munoz. Who made the motion? Councilmember Tovar. Okay, Councilmember Tovar made the motion. Okay, roll call vote, please. Councilmember Armendariz? Yes. Councilmember Bracco? Yes. Councilmember Leroy Munoz? Yes. Councilmember Marks? Yes. Councilmember Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right. Passed unanimously, minus one absent. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for being here. All right. Unfinished business. Appointments to fill vacancies on boards and commissions. Uh, Jimmy's going to give this staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. At your August 2nd, 2021, uh, city council meeting you uh, as the council uh, interviewed uh, applicants for the arts and cultural commission housing neighborhood revitalization committee the library commission and the physically challenged board of appeals at this time you have uh, five seats of or uh, five seats available and four applicants and so uh, at the council's pleasure they could appoint four members to the five vacancies and as such, the city would continue to recruit for that last vacancy, which is in the phys physically challenged Board of Appeals. Uh, so that is the staff recommendation at this time. Thank you. All right, council, does anyone have any comments or anything to add to this? I'd like to motion to approve that. Okay, let me Second. first go to, thank you, but let me first go to public comment. Okay, and I'll come right back to you, Council Member Armendaris. Uh, Christina, does, is there anyone from the public who wants to speak to this? If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press uh, start nine to unmute yourself. Seeing none. Okay, so Council Member Armendaris, back to you to uh, uh, we're approving the four applicants that we interviewed and the one seat would still remain open, right? Yeah. Yeah. I believe oh. Council Member Marks had her hand up, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I seconded. Oh, oh. Okay. got it. So Council Member Armadaris made the motion. Council Member Marks seconded. Uh, roll call vote. Council Member Armadaris? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. All right, unanimous uh, minus one absent. Thank you to the applicants for applying and congratulations. You're on your commissions. All right, item 10, introduction of new business, customer service strategy metrics, implementation measures and timelines. Julie, I believe you're here, right? Giving this report. Yes, I am. All right, here we go. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, Julie Wyrick, Customer Services Manager for the Community Development Department. Um, everyone can see my screen okay? Yes. Great, thank you. So back in March, I presented the Community Development Draft Customer Service Strategy, which included a framework for essentially elevating customer service in our department. First, we identified seven tasks and ongoing approaches uh, which included everything on your screen, identifying our target audience, analyzing customer needs, creating a customer service vision, setting clear and attainable goals for our staff, getting and responding to customer feedback, reinforcing good customer service, and creating administrative remedies when we fall short of our goals. I also presented the draft customer service vision. The City of Gilroy delivers services in a fair, courteous, and timely manner that ensures transparency of process and provides regulatory certainty. With that came the Customer Bill of Rights, which is the right to fair and courteous treatment, the right to be heard, the right to regulatory certainty, the right to responsive service, and the right to administrative remedies. 
The next steps in my process were to create met metrics, implementation measures, and timelines to measure our success, implement new practices, and keep accountable. The metrics are the data we want to gather, measure, and see improve over time. They'll show us our trends, um, where we want to focus our efforts. The implementation measures are things that we're going to do to be able to gather the data and provide improved services to the public. And uh, those implementation measures will get us to our goals of good customer service, timely responses, and satisfied customers. And the timelines are the time dedicated to implement those specific measures, as well as the frequency on which the implementation will occur. So how do we measure our success? What metrics are we looking at? First and foremost, customer feedback and level of satisfa satisfaction. We can directly and immediately respond to issues related to specific projects or concerns from specific customers. And we want to see repeat customers. And what I mean by that is making it easy for people to pull permits. If an applicant comes to the community development department and has a bad experience trying to get their permit, they may take the risk of not getting a permit for their next project. People do have the choice of whether or not they buy property in Gilroy or establish their business here. We want to increase the reasons to invest in Gilroy and reduce any real or perceived barriers. It should be easy for customers to find information online. That information should be accurate. With the new customer self-service portal with the Energov land management system, applicants will not only be able to easily apply for permits online, but they can find out information about their property, check on the status of a permit, pay fees, file code enforcement incidents, etc. Links to documents and forms will be embedded in that system so they don't have to hunt for things on the website. And this is, is going to save time for the applicants as well as staff. Additionally, through Energov, we will be better able to track the time it takes to issue a permit. This information will also be viewable to the applicant. They'll be able to see where they are in the process so we can all keep track of where we are in the process. And if there are issues with permits or permit issuance, staff will also be able to track the time it takes to resolve the problem. This is something we can measure and strive to continually improve. We will also want to keep track of our fees, making sure we're charging appropriately for our services and keeping fees up to date. And finally, we want to factor in staff knowledge and understanding, confidence in applying the rules and regulations and understanding of city goals and policies. A well-trained staff will cut down on mistakes and make for a more efficient process. And that also feeds into staff morale. No one wants to make mistakes and have unhappy customers. So how do we get to that success? The implementation measures include one-time and ongoing tasks that help us collect data to measure improvement and what we want to do to provide enhanced services to the public. We can collect and analyze the data through the website, the customer satisfaction surveys and other means of feedback. We will dedicate staff time to make sure the website and materials are all up to date and accurate. We will create new tools for the public, such as a fee calculator and a process flowchart. We will finish implementing the LMS and the ERP systems and utilize the reports for benchmarking. We will keep going with other process improvements that are in the works, like updating the zoning code and other planning documents. And we'll make sure our fees are up to date and adopted with the budget cycles. Also, we will create a formal process to document and analyze the projects and issues that go wrong in a post incident analysis process so that we can figure out what went wrong and make sure it doesn't happen again. Additionally, we will train the public facing staff, not just in their assigned roles and responsibilities, but also provide customer service training and tools to use while working with the public. We can align staff performance metrics with customer service goals and provide recognition for a job well done. And finally, when will this all occur? Some of it has already occurred and is ongoing. Uh, some of the implementation measures are one time, uh, but most will be ongoing and as needed. We will be conducting project related measures as dictated by the needs of the project, such as communicating with applicants and other staff members to make sure we're on the same page, as well as post approval meetings to go over next steps. Some things will happen as often as weekly, like training opportunities and case debriefs and staff meetings. Other things can occur monthly, such as running reports from Energov. Um, I will be preparing a quarterly report to the city administrator on our successes and areas for improvement. And other tasks that might happen quarterly could be formal training opportunities for staff, things that might occur annually, 
would be compiling data for year-to-year -year comparison, that benchmarking I spoke of, and tasks associated with the budget might occur biennially, like updating fees. The immediate ne next steps in the implementation process are to finalize the new procedures, including the administrative remedies process, the fee calculator, and of course, the implementation of the land management system. We're currently working on making sure that every page of the website is up to date and will include additional feedback mechanisms like customer service email account and links to surveys. Equally important is the creation of a customer service of the customer service training tools, including an updated manual, formal and informal trainings, and linking performance goals to annual reviews. And this concludes my presentation. Uh, this item is to receive the report and provide feedback. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Julie. All right, council members, um, yeah, if you could, there we go. Council member Leromanos. Thank you, Mayor. And Julie, thank you for the great work you're doing on this. It's really exciting to see that we're putting in place actual contours around customer service and looking at the goals and the metrics that you're gonna use to measure success in terms of improving customer service. I think it really boils down to, to one thing. If there's one word I hear repeatedly from people who work with the city, it's time. It's how much time it takes to get things done. And it's such a cliche, but it's true that in business, time is, is really money. And so I think if we can orient much of what we're doing around that goal of reducing the time to permit issuance or time to resolution of issues, these other items around satisfaction, feedback, repeat customers, et cetera, I think they're all going to fall into line if we can get that one thing right. So my one piece of feedback is that I, I, I love the list. I would focus on that time aspect as being one of the very top priorities. But otherwise, this is a very exciting start to see. Thank you. All right, Council Member Marks. Thank you, Julie. I have to echo what was just said. It's, I was so happy when I was reading the report because this is long overdue and we've had so many negative comments from people who did not want to do business with Gilroy because of the long time and getting conflicting comments from one person to another. So I applaud the department. I am looking forward to having some real positive comments back from potential businesses that want to open and it's just exciting. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Armendariz. Um, it's already been said. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, Julie. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else then? All right. I'm going to move on to uh, public comment, if we have any. If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press star nine to unmute yourself. Seeing none. Okay, thank you. This is just receive report and provide feedback. Um, Julie, do you have feedback? <laughs> I think I'm on the right track. Feedback? Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I would say you're on the right track. Absolutely. Very good. Okay, thank you very much. All right, item B. Selection of voting delegate for the League of California Cities 2021 annual conference. Um, I think that's me, right? Nobody's giving this report but me. So council member Tovar has been the delegate in the past. As far as I know, he's the only one attending this year too. So I would like to suggest that we select council member Tovar to be the voting delegate for the League of California Cities 2021 annual conference. And we can take the discussion. We, I don't, I'm not looking, that's what I'm suggesting. It's now open for discussion. And then we'll need to go to public comment and things like that before a motion. So I see one hand raised, council member Armendariz. You're on mute. There we go. Thank you. Thank you, mayor. And um, I appreciate you um, recommending council member Tovar and our city supporting this. Um, I would like to request though that whoever is selected um, be asked to give a, a full report back to us when they uh, return from the, because I think some important things are going to be voted on and I'd like to hear what, you know, what happened and, and the way mm -hmm. we, we voted. 
Okay, thank you. Anybody else with any comments? Okay, let me go to the public hearing and then we'll come back and Councilmember Tobar, Tobar, I'll ask you if that's okay with you, um, you know, to, to report back. But right now let's go to public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak on this item? If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press star nine to unmute yourself. See none. Okay, thank you. All right, Council Member Tovar, are you okay giving us a report uh, when you get back? Yes, Mayor, if, if I may add, just so um, Council Member Armadera is in the past when I've attended, I have usually um, have given a report and also brought back materials for the entire council. So yeah, I have no problem doing that. Very good. Then, did that include, um, did it include swag or just like boring stuff? <laughs> if you're gonna bring back materials, they better be. <laughs> okay. Some swag. <laughs> okay. Do we have a motion? Swag that... Do we have a motion to appoint Council Member Tovar as our voting delegate for 2021? So okay, moved okay. by Council Member the Romano, seconded by Council Member Marks, and we still need a roll call vote. Okay. Council Member Armendariz? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes. I will also be attending, by the way, but I don't have to worry about giving a report. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right. Item C um, Authorized funding for improvements of the Gilroy Golf Course. And Harjot is giving us this report. Okay. Good evening, Mayor, Council members, and the uh, community president tonight. My name is Harjot Sangha, and I'm the city's finance director. I'll be presenting the uh, item before you. Uh, the item uh, before you is basically uh, requesting an authorization uh, to fund improvements at the Gilroy Golf Course, um, which is a result of a uh, property improvement agreement that the city entered into with a developer, uh, Lennar Homes. Um, the, uh, uh, the property improvement agreement amongst uh, various other improvements required uh, the developer to pay for uh, costs to either mitigate leaving the whole line uh, at its current location or relocating the whole line within the golf course property. Um, the final decision wow. to relocate the hole number nine. And as a result, the developer realized uh, some net savings of approximately $114,000 uh, since they were not required to install a high netting along the, uh, the boundary. Instead, they will now be installing a tubular fence of a standard height. Um, so uh, this has presented a unique opportunity for the city to program these one-time dollars uh, for some much needed improvements at the golf course. And in talking to the golf course operator, uh, they have identified several one-time improvements such as replacing uh, additional cart roads uh, and uh, also the picnic barbecue area could also use some uh, improvements as well. Uh, so therefore, uh, staff are uh, recommending that we allocate the savings generated by the uh, decision to reallocate the goal number nine uh, to make improvements, um, you know, in other areas of the uh, golf course. Uh, so with that, that concludes my presentation. The action before you are uh, two recommendations. One is to authorize the funding, and then the other is the adoption of a resolution to amend the budget, which would appropriate the expenditure. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, council members. Um, anyone have any questions for Harjot? Okay. Do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on this item? If you wish to speak on this item, please press star nine to unmute yourself or raise your hand at this time. Seeing none. All right. Thank you. So back to council. Um, I need uh, I make a motion to approve. Okay, motion by Council Member Bracco, seconded by Council Member Armendariz to authorize funding for capital improvements at the Gilroy Golf Course in the amount of $113,900. Roll call vote. Council Member Armendariz? Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Laura Munoz? Yes. Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes, that's unanimous with one absent. And now I need another motion and a second to adopt a resolution. 
appropriating the hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred from capital I'll project for fund. Approval. All right, and I'll second. I'll it doesn't matter. Okay, moved by Councilmember Tovar, seconded by Councilmember Marks to adopt a resolution appropriating the 113,900 from Capital Projects Fund 400 for the related improvements. Roll call vote. Councilmember Member Adam Yes. Council Member Bracco? Yes. Council Member Leroy Munoz? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Marks? Yes. Council Member Tovar? Yes. And Mayor Blinkley? Yes, unanimous with one absent. Okay, city administrators reports. Thank you, Mayor. I have two quick items. One, I would like to remind the community that tomorrow evening is the Local Agency Formation Commission or LAFCO County Fire Service Review. It's a public community meeting and it goes from six to seven o'clock. It's on Zoom and uh, you can find the link uh, for that on the city's website as well as we've been advertising it. So please, if you have any thoughts or opinions on fire service in, in the South County, uh, please uh, log in for that one hour phone uh, for that one hour uh, community meeting. Uh, the second part that I want to uh, broach with council and, and also we are set for our uh, first in-person meeting on September 13th. And after seeing the numerous video issues and I got kicked off three times tonight already, I am ready just like you to get back in person and to see our residents and to see our council members in person. Uh, I will tell you that right now, were we to hold an in-person meeting, we would have to wear masks the entire time. So I think that's something that we really need to think about and be um, cognizant of. In uh, my weekly calls with uh, other city managers and the county manager as well, it's a mixed bag about what communities are doing. Some uh, are fine wearing masks in a, in a, in a live meeting uh, and others uh, just stayed on Zoom. So at this date, we intend to continue to push for the set September 13th in-person meeting, knowing that we will be wearing masks. And if anything changes in county orders or, um, you know, things like that, or in the, in the growth in numbers, uh, then we'll certainly reconsider. But uh, certainly I've heard loud and clear from council that they'd like to get back. And there are some cities that have done so as well. So uh, we have also started our public outreach with the city hall reopening on August 30th, which we are still on schedule to do. Uh, but we are watching from a little bit of a distance with caution, uh, seeing what's going on around us. So we'll, uh, we're, we'll, we'll adapt and we'll adjust as needed, but that is our plan for now. Uh, that, that completes my report. Okay, do council members have anything they want to ask or say to any of that? Council member Bracco, are you going to remain quiet? Well, I'm not going to wear a mask. <laughs> so that was afraid he was going to say. <laughs> okay, so we'll have to. Uh... Well, I mean, with, with those comments being made, what, what's what's how are we going to handle that? I mean, Jimmy just said something completely different. So well, no, we have, we have to wear masks. No, 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 no. Not right. obey to by the... Yeah, yeah, we, we have to wear masks if we meet in person. By so... the time the 14th comes yes. around, maybe if changed. Yeah, we'll see. No, if we meet in person, oh, we... it wasn't going to... you were cutting out council member Tober. I just want to assure you that if we meet in person, we have to wear masks. So uh... that's... So um, I, I suppose if we're not all wearing masks, then we're not meeting in person. So we're, but that will be for our, we'll let, we'll right. let that's what, I'm, that's what I was asking. I was just wanting to, sorry, yeah. my, my connection. That... Yeah, it's, it's sketchy, but yeah, no, we, we cannot meet in person without everybody wearing a mask. So that's how that will be. Mayor, may I say something? Yes. I hate wearing a mask, just like you know, Council Member um, Bracco, but I think it's more important for us to meet in person. And I think we all have to make that little bit of sacrifice if that's the only way we can do it. And I, I really hope by like Council Member Bracco that maybe things will change by them. But if not, I really hope we can convince you, Council Member Bracco, to wear a mask because the time has come to stop meeting on Zoom and face the public and face each other, which will be very, very valuable. Council Member Armendaris? Will there be a, a hybrid option for us as well as for the public uh, in case, uh, you know, Council Member Bracco or anyone else doesn't want to wear a mask? You mean some council members in person and some council members online? I hope not. Right. No. No. 
Do you, you want to answer that? Yeah. Council member Armendaris, I have not heard of that being an option anywhere. The only hybrid option that I'm familiar with is letting the public uh, participate remotely, but not council members. Okay, so then um, at which point will we know if we're meeting in person or not? Well, I think we'd have to make that decision uh, administratively when we publish the agenda, which is uh, what, 72 business day hours beforehand. So usually the Thursday before the council meeting, Wednesday, excuse me, before the council meeting. Well, okay. Mayor, going back to my, uh, sorry, I'm having bad connection here. So council member Brockwell just adamantly said he's not gonna wear one, so. Right, so he's, I, hoping, I, he's hoping the rules change. Right, right, if the rules don't change, again, I mean, I understand his reason, but I also agree with council member Marks. I mean, we need to meet in person, but, I also worry because my parents are high at risk and I do not want to be um, subject to anything. So that's why I think we need to think this through and make sure that we're all on the same page here because um, if some of us want to and some of us don't, then you know we're never gonna get to where we want to be. So it'd be no nice worries. to know sooner. Later. Yeah, no, no worries at all. Well, Jimmy, our city administrator will make this call. He's hearing everybody. We will not be meeting in person if somebody is not wearing a mask. Okay, so I'm not gonna be hey, wait, I'm not gonna be the only one to not wear a mask, okay? I don't uh, want to wear a mask, but if the council's wearing a mask, I'm gonna wear one. There we go. Thank okay. you, Dion. <laughs> Thank you, Dion. We'll get you a Raider mask. So, yeah, come to think of it, I don't know if I've seen you in a mask, but okay. <laughs> okay. All right, enough on the subject. I think we're all clear. Unless the rules change, in-person meeting means everybody wears a mask. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, City Attorney. Yes, uh, I, have, I have no report, but uh, we do have a closed session, so I can lead into that if you would like. Please. And the closed session is a conference with legal counsel existing litigation pursuant to paragraph one of subdivision D of section 54956.9 of the government code and OGO section 17A113A. Case name is Miriam Smith v. City of Gilroy, United States Northern District Court of California, case number 521CB00313 BKD, filed January 13, 2021. So the process now is first to take public comment, after which I will advise you of the reason for the closed session, and then you'd have to take a vote on whether to go into closed session or not. So the first right. thing to do is call for public comment. Thank you. Do we have any public comments? If you wish to speak on this item, please raise your hand at this time or press star nine to unmute yourself. See none. All right, thank All right. you. Th thank okay. you. Then, then pursuant to OGO section 17A11-3, um, uh, I would advise you that the, in the opinion of the city attorney, the position of the city would likely and unavoidably be prejudiced uh, by discussing the matters in open session. And that is the reason to go into closed session. So we now need to take a vote on whether to go into closed session. All right. Um, we do this thumbs up, right? Thumbs yes, up to go into closed session? Up. Yeah. All right. Everybody, I don't see, there we go. Yes. Uh, Council Member Tobar, you're yes. And Council Member Bracco? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. All right, and then when we go into closed session, we do not need to take a vote to stay in closed session because we just took one to go in. Okay, Council Member Tobar, your hand is raised. Um, okay, well, you could tell us in closed session then. All right, so we need to, who is, someone needs to let everybody else go, right? All right, let me see here. Yeah, Jason Smith is still on. He, he's going to be with us, Mayor. Oh. I'm sorry, I got kicked out. Did you ask me a question, Mayor? No, I, I thought you had your hand raised. Oh, no, no I was giving you a thumbs up, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, Jimmy, do you have to take over? Yeah. Yeah, let me make sure I've got 
on attendees, that's where people sneak in yeah, on me. And I still see Facebook on. Yep. Let me uh, boot these people off. Okay, I've got the attendees right. I've got nine participants, seven, me and Captain Smith. And then I'm going to turn off.